Good morning and welcome to The Weekender. In this episode, we're going to be giving away a copy of Aeronautica Imperialis. Uh, I so love it. If you want to be in with a chance of winning that, get a comment in on this video on YouTube. But more importantly, come across to ontabletop.com, the place where we call home, the place we want you to call home, the place where we are completely uninterfered and unencumbered by all of the politics and all the other crap that goes on within YouTube and other social media. It's a place we control so we know you get to see what we want you to see. See, we control the horizontal, we control the vertical. <laughs> so any comment, any comment that's placed on, on this video and on tabletop.com is worth two. Hey, mm. hey, Ooh. hey. So love that. let me introduce everybody. I am Warren from the On Tabletop team. And this morning I am joined by my baldy buddy, Justin. Hello. I am joined by... By the great Sasquatch in the clouds, <laughs> my man, it's got to be the Jerry. Uh. <laughs> We're oh, joined by the bearded seer, the man who wants to be a badger, <laughs> and in many ways so is gradually making it. <laughs> it is, of course, Ben. And then for a little change of a pace this morning, we've brought in the sprightly one. We've brought in the one with the energy, the little coiled spring, <laughs> the handsomest dude in the whole of On Tabletop. Oh, how? True. It is true, Justin. I know. Where the rest of us are all butt ugly, man. No, no, it's <laughs> not true. As soon as he came in, I was just there going, I'm not the pretty one anymore. <laughs> Where are you at? <laughs> 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 it is, of course. It's Ryan. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Thank you very much. It's it's going to be a pleasure to to have you and all your doctorates here with us. Brilliant to, to keep us right. <laughs> I, I know at least one thing that we're talking about today. So Yay! I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be awesome. Yeah. Okay. To kick off, um, we've got three announcements. Okay. Sixteenth of September is the launch of the Infinity Online Global Campaign. Prepare yourselves for that. You're going into space. Mm -hmm. It's going to be super fantastic, right? You're doing number Next one? up, on October 5th, we have the Bolt Action Korea event, which is taking place here. Um, uh, this is not the a picture center. from the event because the event is in our future. Yes, the event yes. is in the future. The event hasn't happened yet. Yes. Apologies, we weren't able to bring you uh, information much quicker than this. We've been trying to gauge um, uh, just how many spaces we can actually pull together for mm -hmm. this um, because the, the event is quite tricky to do. Mm. Um, um, there's a there's a lot of work in it. We we it's it's been a hard one for us to to try and get our heads around. Important note, it's f -f 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 free. Yes, it's a free event. We have ten free with ticket. We get free with a ticket. Ah. okay. We have ten spaces. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ten of you can join us for this event, and it's uh, it takes place on Saturday, October fifth, between eleven a.m. and ten p.m. Mm. Um, and you're going to be able to come and play Bolt Action Korea. We're going to be building up some themed tables. We have some ideas now on how we're going to uh, accomplish that. You bring your own armies, you play out some games, and we're going to have some special swag to give away, like uh, Bolt Action Dice and uh, Korea medals and, and things like that. Um, for anybody that picks up a free ticket, you're very welcome to join us in the member suite on Friday night. And uh, we will also open on the Sunday for some open gaming mm. um, uh, for anybody that has, uh, has arrived. We'll probably put that out to our other local members and stuff as well. It will be open that Sunday. Um, just so as if you've come this way, this length for the for the event, um, you can have a full weekend mm -hmm. of, of various gaming. Yay. Just need a thousand points, kids. Is, one, that, is one, that what they need? A thousand yeah. points of bolt action? Yeah. yeah. So the, the rough idea is the uh, Saturday will be a bolt action tournament. First game, 750 points and a nine dice limit. And then the next three games will be 1,000 points with a 12 dice limit. So mm -hmm. once you've got your ticket, um, we'll 
give it a little pack out to you because there'll be set set scenarios as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm still tweaking things at the moment because I don't want the set scenarios to be so set that people know what's coming in advance. Right. So it may be set per game with the dice roll. So there may be two options or three options for each game. Um, and then it'll, it'll be a standard sort of tournament setup with a, a Swiss uh, matchup after the first. But I know we do have a couple of, a uh, couple of, locals who want to come so i may even end up seeding pots so i try and keep people who play together separated for the first game at least yeah and then after the fact we start to break down from there but you know mm. page tickets, one takes your chances <clears throat> tickets we'll be putting the link to the tickets in tomorrow morning's xlbs show um uh, cult of games members are going to get first crack at the tickets if we've if we've anything left from the 10 um we will uh, we will post them uh, on on the front page um but if uh, about 5 or 6 a.m tomorrow morning um the link to the tickets will go live on the in the the post on on tabletop.com for the xlbs show mm -hmm. we only have 10 and they are free Hmm. So, just um, get yourself here with your <laughs> army. I'm prepared to probably kick Lloyd's ass, maybe if he gets his <laughs> Koreans together. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And again, uh, sincere apologies. We haven't been able to bring you information on that uh, sooner. It's the first. It's the first kind of event of this type that we have run, and it was. Uh, it, the, the, because it's a one day event it's not it's not something that we have been used to it's not a boot camp it's not a hobby weekend it, it's something very different and we've been trying to work out how we go about uh, doing it and doing it to the best of our ability so it's a, it's just taken a bit of a bit of working out to try and understand that but if we can get the format to work then um there's scope for some some interesting oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. one day kind of things going going forward um but we know that a lot of you kind of travel here from further afield. So, you know, this is, we don't want you to come all this way just for one day. You know, so it's, we need to, we need to take some thinking uh, around this. Okay. Flames of War. Uh, they're doing a live launch today. Um, uh, Battlefront are going to be running uh, a live launch blog. Um, you can find that over at launch.battlefront.co.nz. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to have some how-to videos with uh, modeling, painting, spotlights, army building articles. And it's all related to... The Germans. The Germans are coming to D-Day. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so the D-Day German book is landed. If we can get a, get a glimpse of the guys. We get the Jerry. Is the button working? There it is. There it is. <laughs> D Germans don't need to come to D-Day. D-Day comes to the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that one goes. So, um, so yeah, so that's the uh, D-Day German book itself. Mm -hmm. And then with that, there's also the unit cards, uh, which are the same breakdown as the book. And then if you want to be frisky, there's the command cards. Now, I, how I, did the command cards work in Flames of War? Command cards, there's a couple of different things with the command cards. So, for example... Um, you can have like an observation um, Panzer three to use for your artillery spotting, mm -hmm. um, but then you can get things like the SDKF Z two fifty OP. So that's a half track observation uh, post instead. So you replace things. So it allows you to tweak in other bits and pieces. But then you can also get things like Lucky which is one point. So one point of your 100 point list could be discard this card to reroll one dice. Oh. Any dice at any time. So at what point do you draw these cards? Or? You, you don't draw these. These are built in. So this this is points. So when you build your list, you go, I'm going to, you know what I'm going to have? I'm going to have assault gun escorts, uh, which is infantry from Foschmuger rifle platoon. Oh, uh, so you within can this spend. can be mounted on your armor track. So you can, you can, spend points to tweak and upgrade and change your list they're not needed they're not part of the actual oh. book but they give you a, a different flavor and a different way so to it's play a little bit of like a star wars legiony kind of thing yeah. yeah so you can uh, so whenever i'm pointing up a list yeah. for flames yeah. of war i could allocate a certain amount of points to buying up some command points yeah. or those few points that are always left yeah, at the yeah. End. when yeah. you've got points left over you, you can go fill in the gaps yeah you can go to do I finish my 100 point list at 99 points or do I go for one point of lucky? I'm going to have one point of lucky, please. One point of lucky, absolutely. Yeah, because you oh, never that's know. that's a nice touch. So, yeah. so that's part of the, the actual 
the, the, building. the building of the yeah, the yeah. so at the moment d-day um german and american forces have them the others will have to wait mm -hmm. Unlucky, unlucky people. <laughs> now we we've had a chance to have a look through the the D Day German book. Mm. It's a gorgeous book. Yeah, you know, it's a, there's some great stuff in it. Mm. Um, I if you check back um, a couple of days ago, Wednesday, Wednesday, we posted a video where we were uh, we're we're all kind of involved in the hobby league, mm. the the Flames of War hobby league at the moment. So we um we were taking my army as it currently stands. Mm and working out what I was going to add to it to take it up to just over a hundred and something points mm, yeah. to give options. me a little bit of, yeah, to give me some options to swap some stuff uh, in or out. Um, so definitely go and check that video yeah. out. Also, the reason we're doing all of this is that we're going to be launching a massive global D-Day Flames of War campaign mm -hmm. um, uh, later in the year. Okay. Um, I was in a meeting with the guys from uh, Battlefront in New Zealand uh, recently where we were talking about the, the mechanics of the campaign and how the campaign's gonna gonna work. Holy smokes. This this campaign is gonna be insanely great. Is it a piece of precision German engineering, much like the Tiger? <laughs> oh, no, it, it just... Uh, no, it doesn't break down. <laughs> <laughs> if, Oops. If you've... Look, if, uh, I, am, I am putting this out. I, I am putting the Global Flames of War community on warning here, right? Mm -hmm. The guys at Battlefront are pushing the boat out right. on this campaign, as are we. Um, this could be the single coolest campaign that we have ever run. Um, I mean, it is, it's going to be big. It's going to be epic. It'll tie in with the campaign that you can run in your local stores and your local clubs. Um, and I just, uh, I was, I was getting more and more excited. Oh, well, oh, you've done the, the little hand shimmy. The little hand shimmy was going and I was like, oh my God, this is going to be great. So, there's so much stuff I want to tell you. There's so much cool things I want to show you. Are you NDA'd? It's not that I'm NDA'd, right? Okay. Spoilers? I'm, I'm S waiting. Spoilers, it's based around D-Day. <laughs> <laughs> Careful now, I don't want you to know what happened. <laughs> but um, it, it, what it's based around, there's a couple of really, really cool things happening, okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I'm just waiting to hear back from the... The, the guys at Battlefront, mm -hmm. the, will, uh, if the big boss okays it, uh, right? Um, because there's there's just the the campaign is magnificent, uh, but there's a couple of there's a couple of things that I just need to sort out because once they're sorted out, this is a campaign that goes to god status. Oh, <laughs> okay. I that's, have I have never as a hefty statement. I have never been so motivated to get my Flames of War army together mm -hmm. as I am uh, for this campaign. Good okay. Man. Um, it, it, whenever whenever we had finished talking about the, the ins and outs of this campaign, online campaigns are tricky things to run. Okay. But the the guys, this will be the third campaign we'll have run with the guys at Battlefront. We've run two World War Three campaigns. Hmm. This is our first World War Two campaign. And they what they came out with us today, basically they come up with a lot of the mechanics and the rules and stuff. And then we provide the platform and shape the platform and get all the platform and all working. Hmm. I, I, they, they have got it, and and they came on and they were showing me the, the, their thoughts on the mechanics and the map. Oh my god, what do you see the map? <laughs> and I was like, oh, dude, this this is just this is just hobby heaven right here. This is just hobby hobby heaven. Mm. And then we came up with a couple of additional ideas that oh, please please Battlefront come back and say yes on those because they are going to set the thing on fire <laughs> were they based around german saucers no oh, no, no, no 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 yes <laughs> <laughs> sorry, maybe. <laughs> no there's there's no german saucers or, or, or anything in it now i'm getting the word out now right if you have ever fancied getting involved in a bit of world war ii gaming okay um now's your chance now's your chance Come and join us 
um, uh, uh, join myself, Justin, Jerry, um, Dr. Dave, I'm putting you on notice, man. I'm, I'm reaching out to you, Dr. Dave, as well. We're, we're, we're going to get you over here for, uh, for something soon. <laughs> but if you've never done it, right, you and a mate get together, right? Come over to store.ontabletop.com. Mm -hmm. Pick up two boxes of Hit the Beach. Flames of War Hit the Beach. It's right, no, no, hang on. Let me double check. We have them in stock. Uh, yes, I got. Okay. I, I, I brought in. Uh, I brought in. Well, as many as we, as we could. So we, we've we've had thirty or forty of them. Okay, that, that, that's right. right. Just, yeah. you're, you're putting the shout out there. I want to make sure people aren't just going back orders. Yeah, we no, we've thirty or forty sitting cool. there. So I believe. <laughs> so Tom will <laughs> kick my ass if we don't. But, um, <laughs> it, it's it is by far my favorite gaming starter set mm. ever. Okay, at the moment it, it is just on fire. In that, in one box alone, if you price those models individually, there's 140 quid's worth of models in there. You get that box. Mm. Uh, I think from from store on tabletop.com. I think they're 28 quid, mm. right? 28 and shrapnel. 28 and change. <laughs> mm. Okay, if you and a mate get that box, one of those boxes each, mm. and then you take all the German stuff and give your mate all the American stuff, mm -hmm. you've pretty much got what you need to for a good size, two good sized yeah. armies, and you can participate in the Hobby League, mm -hmm. which uh, which uh, we're running with Battlefront and um, over on, on tabletop.com. If you put in, you, you do a project, we have this great little project system where you can kind of record and post photographs and things like that as your project progresses. And you can go in and see other people's projects. Mm. You can see, and see how they're it's doing. Amazing. <laughs> so you can go in and look at the project, create a project. There'll be some prizes and things like that for the Hobby League. So you get to do some hobby time. And then at the end of it, you get to compete. Well, I say compete. I would rather say participate. Participate. Yeah. Yeah. In the, in this narrative D Day campaign that is going to be running um, in the winter, mm. and uh, so if you've ever if if it's ever appealed to you, if you've ever fancied getting into some World War Two gaming, now is the time to do it. Just go grab it. Get grab a friend. Build the stuff. Believe me, you you you're. you're unlikely to regret it. it it is a lot of fun the game is great and with everything it has been organized now is a good time to jump in because you've got loads of support you'll have loads of people all around you the hobby league is blowing up hmm. all over the world the hobby league is blowing up uh, loads and loads of people getting involved in that and it's just it's great it's as, it's as community spirited a thing as i have felt in a while now hmm. um uh, and it's cool. And if you've yeah. questions, ask on tabletop. Yes. Yeah. Come that, uh, come and uh, come and uh, let us know. You know, hop into the forums. I'll or quite happily ask anything apart from Soviets. I'll I'll have a stab at. <laughs> yeah. And, and to be fair, I'd stab a few Soviets. So that's <laughs> close enough. <laughs> but uh, but I know after the vlog went out for us talking about how we were going to expand your Germans. Yeah. Um, Somebody went, uh, yeah, that's great. Any chance you could do the Americans? And to be fair, the Americans came out first and we kind of glossed over that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so I've been doing the studio uh, army for the Americans, which if I've been productive enough, may even appear on Battlefront's website this weekend. We'll mm -hmm. see, yeah. see whether or not yeah. they, they allow me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we could we could grab the, the studio Americans next week, maybe mm -hmm. grab a camera do and we'll do, this, do the same thing go through what D-Day America is and, and how you can expand and, and build your, your American force as well. So and things then, like this. And then we'll do the Brits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got time for them. We've got They're time for them. February, <laughs> February 2020. February. Yeah. Okay. So, well, we'll do the so, Brits in February, but yeah. we will do the Americans. Yeah. yeah. We, we can so, certainly do a, a primer for the, the British and the Soviets, but they won't see their own books until next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there, there yeah. you have it, guys. Um, look, an open invitation to, to come on board with us join in on this it's it's a lot of fun and i i've got to say that i've i've really really enjoyed um the the flames of war fourth for the late war it's been it's been great and, I, and i'm a big fan of all the the, the cards and things like that there just it, it's the game is a, is very approachable for me at the moment and I, i've been enjoying it and love the models how many stugs are in your army these days warren how many because you, you used to be of, massively into your stooks. Officially? Officially. In this army that yeah. I'm doing, yeah. there are zero stooks. 
<laughs> I am surprised. And that's exactly why I did it. Yeah. <laughs> because you and half the planet of war gamers are now surprised. You're yeah. all going, what? No, no stucks. stucks. No stucks. I'm going to have to remake your new coffee pitcher. My, uh, I've decided, um, I, I'd said in the vlog actually yeah. on Wednesday, mm. I deliberately stayed away from the stucks. Um, uh, specifically, just because you know that's what people expect, and I, yeah. I, I, I thought to myself, no, I'm going to do something different. Yeah, so enough. I have um, uh, my my tool of choice. I have two main tools of choice. I have three main tools of choice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's in, go back out and come in again. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have three main tools of choice. This is why I'm loving this so much, right? Mm. I have three main tools of choice, right? One is I love infantry in mm. Flames of War because mm. they piss your opponent off like nothing else. Yeah, massively. They can be so annoying. Massively. Infantry used effectively in Flames of War is absolutely brilliant. A, you can frustrate your opponent, or B, as happened to me during a game during the Flames of War weekend, where uh, Laughing Boy, where Martin used his infantry to great effect to hop between buildings, mm. a tactic that I hadn't quite anticipated, but he had them like orangutans jumping from building to building, and before I knew it, he had me completely overrun. Bluttered me completely, Justin. Right. Okay. Like, uh, I just, he caught me with a tactic and it was one of those ones that I didn't see it coming mm -hmm. until the point he hadn't killed anything by this stage, but I realized, oh, sugar. So he had just it set you up for purest pain. It's too late. I don't know what I can do to counter this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful piece of, uh, piece of play and it was beautiful. The, the way the game executed, it was just great. Mm. So infantry. Yeah. I just like infantry and flames. Tool number one. Right. Tool number one. Tool number two. Mm -hmm. 88. The artillery? 88. Yeah. Static 88. I like static 88 because basically I have four of them. And it's basically like putting four tigers on the table. And you just know that regardless of what they do, your opponent will never, ever be able to take their eye off those 88s. No. Yep. Area denial as well. Uh, well, it's just, it's the shiny thing. Everybody, every any opponent you play is going to look at the 88s and think I know what I'm doing with them. I don't know what I'm doing with them, <laughs> but they will get preoccupied with that. So I can work with other stuff that I don't know what I'm doing with. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's, it's getting rid of ants using a sledgehammer. Yeah, I love, I love yeah, the yeah, You're not removing that. And then finally, the, 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 the centerpiece of this army is the Panzer IV. Ah, so it's not the big cats. No panthers, no tigers. No, no panthers, no tigers. I have a king tiger somewhere, but Jerry tells me I'm not allowed to use it Allowed. <laughs> <laughs> but, I can't to use be it. fair, actually, hmm, I don't know if it's in. No, it's not in there. The Panzer Lair... And we did talk about that. Yes. They did get, I think, three King Tigers, but they were the early versions of the King Tigers and they were very prone to mechanical breakdown and just being generally terrible. But they, they were one of the, the first first units to uh -huh. receive their delivery of, of King, King Tiger. Tiger. So, you know, maybe at some point you may get a mechanically unreliable King Tiger. It doesn't matter because the Panzer IV is a beautiful looking Oh, bike. yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm 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 a real fan of the Panzer IV. Obviously, not as much as the Stug, mm. but I'm going to come I'm going to come back to the Stugs uh, uh, later mm -hmm. in the war when I can put my tank riders and stuff like that. Uh, on. I see. Uh, so for the moment, that that that's my that's Warren's holy trinity. Are the tank riders in there? Oh yeah, it's a little pointy <laughs> upgrade for oh, tank riders. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's thinking Stug. So we've, uh, no, so, we, so we've already put your stuff aside for so what you're using. It went from a shamrock holy trinity to a four leaf clover. <laughs> yeah, the Stugs are coming back. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So yeah, it, it's uh, it is it's just it's just so much hobby goodness right mm. now. It really is. Um, yeah, so Flames 4 live launch this weekend. <laughs> well, we've, <laughs> we've added to it. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, guys, let's, uh, let's have a look at the, the news. Ben, what is going on in the world, my man? Uh, cool. So the first stuff we're going to be looking at is from Games Workshop for uh, Asia Sigma. And the first bit of news that came out over the uh, little weekend last weekend was that this weekend we're going to see the return of Gotrek Gurnison or Gotrek Gunnison, however you want to say his name, returning to the Mortal Realms on the tabletop with the new miniature. Yes. Now, looks very cool. 
Very nice picture. But he's missing a few things. He hasn't got his nose ring and his chain, which was, you know, symbolic. He hasn't got his eye patch because he got torn out. I don't know why. And also, he's missing Felix because obviously things happened in the, the end times, all that kind of thing. And, you know, the scion of Grimnir himself couldn't really take his human with him into the, the new world, as it were. But it'll be very interesting to see how he plays out on the tabletop nowadays. Hopefully, we're going to see a little bit of a war scroll and everything for him. And we'll get some good stuff for him joining all the forces of order as they go slaying monsters and all sorts of things like that. And as well as the miniature, there's also some news to come uh, in terms of the novels and the stories of Gotrek as he's wandering around the mortal realms as well. So as well as Realm Slayer, which is the, uh, the one that was done by, uh, voiced by Brian Blessed, that we talked about a couple of months ago. That's fantastic. Yeah. We've also got a new book, which is called Ghoul Slayer, where uh, uh, Gotrek goes off with his new, new friend, his new companion, Malaneth, who is an ale assassin, and they go hunting in the realm of Saish to try and find the king of the undead himself, Nagash. And obviously, Gotrek is very, very angry with him for many, many reasons. So, uh, yeah, Gotrek is why, returning why, why to the... Why is Gotrek angry at Nagash? Why would anybody be angry at Nagash? Because Nagash, Nagash God saved God. Nagash saved Warhammer Fantasy for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> Trek is still. I'm only triggering you guys. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Trek is still the best worst dwarf slayer in the entire universe. The best worst dwarf slayer. Yeah. Troll slayer. Well, it, it, I, 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 haven't read, I haven't read all of the um, the final two-parter um, story that came out sort of towards the end of the end times, but spoilers, obviously, for anyone who hasn't read it, but Gotrek and Felix go off into the chaos waste to try and, you know, hold back the tide of chaos and all that kind of thing, and it come, comes down to a fight uh, between uh, Gotrek, who slays Belakor and stops him from ascending to godhood, but then it's revealed that Grimnir himself you know, off there in the void has been putting all these challenges forward in front of Gotrek so that he can now assume the mantle of this ancestor god for the dwarves. And so Gotrek goes off into the, the darkness to fight demons practically forever while Felix is left, unfortunately, to, to bite the dust, as with everyone else. Imagine we imagine so anyway. But in the new book or the new audio book anyway from uh Case Workshop and Black Library, which was voiced by Brian Blessing, I'm gonna say that again, which is very, very cool. <laughs> um there he learns about obviously about the Stormcast Eternals. And so he learns that maybe Felix is alive out there somewhere, reincarnated as the Stormcast Eternal. So we'll have to see where the story goes. It'll be nice for him to come back. Obviously, I don't imagine he's gonna be coming back in his stripy trousers as he was before, but um, yeah. yeah, it'll be very, very cool. Stripy gold back. armor instead, but it's not <laughs> so. sounds like it, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's really cool to see a new model. So yeah. I assume yeah, he's just looking great. for Felix because he wants his axe back. What do you think of the model? <laughs> I love it. I, 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 I think like it's the great. Of this. Um, I don't mind it at all, except it could have any other name on it and it wouldn't make a difference. But it's him. It's not him. <laughs> it is him. He doesn't have his axe. He's got two eyes. Yeah. Did he grow one back? Well, you don't <laughs> know if he has two eyes. Have we got a close up of his face? Scroll yeah. down there. there. There is pictures from the front of the book where he does have two eyes. Yeah. Uh, so he's got, his, know, he's got his eye back. He doesn't have his axe and he's messing his human. Uh -huh. That could be any ginger lunatic. <laughs> Go to Glasgow on a Saturday night, and you'll meet three of these guys. You know, uh, please tell me there's carrying... no more gaming cons in Glasgow. Oh uh, god, yeah, plenty of them. Don't he, is, worry. he is now carrying around a new ancestral weapon, which is called Zangrom Thraz, which is the axe that he has there. But obviously, mm. it's not the axe that was presumed to be the twin of Grimnir's axe. Mm. Uh, yeah. Back in well, but, uh, well yeah. do you know what? Uh, I'm I'm not adverse to a reimagining. You know, it'll be interesting to see. It gives them a new story to tell, Jerry, because otherwise they're just the telling story the story of where he story. got his eyeball back from. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We could. Do you know what they could do? Like a Han Solo movie That'd kind of good. thing. How, where did Gotrek Gotrek find, got his find his stuff? Where did he find his stuff? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dude, next, my axe. next up, um, we have the monsters and mercenaries for Warcry. Yes, Warcry is only just out, and we already have new stuff for it. Yeah, so we talked about it a little bit last week, but um, now it came out a lot sooner than everyone thought it would, you know, but uh, Monsters and Mercenaries is the new expansion that's coming out for pre-order this weekend. So you've had to get it next weekend for you to use in your games of Warcry. And this is a new book that includes a whole bunch of new rules in there for including monsters in your warband, for doing little sort of troll hunts where you got to try and hunt down creatures like the Chimera and the dragons and all that kind of thing. And then also you're allowed to, you'll be able to add heroes into the mix as well, a little bit like what you had to do with uh, Kill Team and the Elites and stuff like that that they did with those expansions for that in 
140,000. Uh, as well as the expansion book itself, they've also got a couple of more sort of like box sets coming out. So there's a repackaged Chimera, which will come with the rules for using it in uh, Warcry, which is very cool. Mm-hmm. And there's also going to be uh, proper boxes for the Iron Golems and the Untamed as well. So if you like the idea of playing as those guys, but you didn't pick up the starter set, you can now buy them separately, which is uh, an option there too. And of course, there's some new terrain as well, because you need more terrain. Play these is awesome the terrain a repack? Uh, I, looks new to me. I'm, not entirely, I'm not entirely sure. I think the terrain is new, um, but obviously it comes with like a, a board underneath it as well, yeah, which yeah, is... Yeah. Uh, these these terrain also, packs for Warcry are fantastic, yeah. yeah, I've got to say. There's also a bunch of cards in there as well for you to use to sort of randomize the deployment and that kind of thing as well. Mm-hmm. Clearly, the, clearly Workshop are committed to this Warcry game, and, uh, and, and I'm I really... Too. I'm really glad to see it because I think it's probably the best game they have at the moment. Mm. Um, uh, mechanically speaking mm. and how it works for an organized play system, it, it's very, very tight. Yeah. Very tight. I like that. Right. The big news, though, this week is uh, Aeronautica Imperialis has landed. Justin, do you want yeah. to whip out your box? Oh, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> Get that box out, man. Okay, so see this. this is the one that you guys could win this week, but we're going to take a little bit of a, a peeky poo inside. Yeah, we're not going to poo in it. We're just going to look at <laughs> it. All right? Do not worry. I've never heard any No <laughs> element of Justin will be in that box. It will be completely clean and spotless. <laughs> Dear me. I uh, envy your distance, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, open the box up there. It's in the box. Gwyneth so Justin, head. what can you tell us about uh, Aeronautica? <laughs> if you give me one second. I'll fill you in in the time being. So yeah. it's aircraft combat in the 41st millennium, and it's um, not a repackage, not a reprint of the Forge World one. It has a new system behind it that's similar. So it's hex map based. <laughs> Um, so you can see here things like your movement diagrams. Yeah. So you have a set of orcs against a set of imperial guard well imperial navy actually and they're um here we have the actual instruction booklet so you've got the daca jet fighter bomber thunderbolt and marauder and these are on rin's world which is is famous for the orcs overran it so badly um that the crimson fists who were on rin's world got shooed almost to the point of extinction. Mm-hmm. So, so Rin's World has been kicking around in the storyline for 40k for years. The very first uh, scenario in Rogue Trader was on Rin's World. It was the battle for the farm. Right. So so th- this is a, uh, a world that's steeped with, uh, with 40k lore. Yeah. And, and this is where they've returned to to bring us this um, Adeptus Titanicus tangential game mm-hmm. it's same scale but different system yeah. uh, so you get things like your hex map um now this is a paper map that you mm-hmm. may be able to see there yeah you can see the sort of grid lines and that sort of thing on mm-hmm. i believe there are yes there's card card there, maps there are card stuff maps that, yeah, that people can upgrade, upgrade. upgrade yeah uh you get a very nice that's just a nice little divider they always yeah. the end of the boxes these days that is quite cute actually yeah Look, well, you know, here, there's, a, that to there's fighter bombers uh, up against. Do you know what I like about that? It reminds me of an LP. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, yeah, looking at that, and I'm thinking that's an LP, man. I'm, I'm missing the days. Yeah. You know, check that, out these on the yeah. back, though. So, so these are the models that we'll get in here. So your Marat, Imperial Navy bomber and Thunderbolt fighters, mm-hmm. and then the Dak ejects and fighter bombers for the orcs for the warg. Now the proof is in the pudding here, guys. What are the models like? They, they are, are the best gorgeous. bubble wrap, and I really want to punch this, but I know I can't. <laughs> it's, it's the whoever, unbubble bubble wrap. Whoever wins this, we will spray this red for you. Oh, t- we, tension wrap. So yeah, you can use it. <laughs> yeah, uh, the so models are absolutely yeah, fabulous in so this set. The, the set details of, are super crisp. Do that. Look at that. They really are mm. sharp. Sharp is a sharp thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, sitting beside um, your Adeptus Titanicus stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This stuff's just going to look amazing. You oh see, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking with the new contrast paints out, mm-hmm. yeah. it's, these models are just going to look gorgeous with just a little touch of contrast work and then some details picked out. You think so, yeah? I think definitely so. I mean, those orc ones look particularly nice. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen them, mm-hmm. I mean that one over there. Just the detail oh on the word. things Look like the, the engine blocks. Yeah. 
they wouldn't go miss on something that was substantially larger. Mm. Yeah. Now, for the actual game system for the game, it's actually an, an I go, you go system. Okay, so what does that mean? So basically, we'll roll for the initiative at the beginning of the, the turn, right? Mm-hmm. And if I win, I can decide, decide to go first myself or force you to go first in the turn. Mm-hmm. So that means during the movement step, whoever's going first activates a unit, does their stuff with it, and then it transfers to the other person. So there's a nice back and forth of trying to outguess your opponent and actually trying so to... So it's not a case of I move all my planes, exactly. fire all my planes. and um, right, Okay, yeah. Exactly. And that works so well for aerial combat games because you're always trying to outthink and outsmart your opponent trying to move into a line of fire where you think they're going to move into. Yeah, well, an aerial combat game has to be based around its movement. You know, its movement has to be a core... <clears throat> Mm-hmm. And it really is for this, especially with the, the movement sheets, because as you can see on that, if you pass me one of those, Jerry, I'll quickly show everyone. So it's just one of those sheets down the bottom. Mm-hmm. There is a the preset All right, one of those. separate ace maneuvers, of is it? Movement yeah. you can do. And depending on your aircraft, you can do either one through four, one through six, one through eight. So not all aircraft are created equal, and it's oh. very easy to see the different movements. So the, the they more can take. agile your aircraft, exactly. the more of those maneuvers that you can make. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Now there's obviously to the trade-off on that. If you're a big heavy marauder bomber, mm-hmm. you're going to be able to take a bit more punishment. If someone's got flanking fire on you, you can fire back with like a turret weapon. Mm-hmm. So there is nice attack and counter attack things happening, and there's a specific phase of the game before your movement where if you're flanking someone you get a bonus round of shooting, a sort mm-hmm. of a reward for being able to actually get into that good oh, position. That's interesting, yeah. You know, so I really like that as well. Then the the way the weapons are actually working, they've engineered in all your elevation, all your speed changes. So if you're climbing, you're going to be slowing down. If you're diving, you're going to be speeding up. You speed up too much, your airframe is going to start ripping apart. Really? Yep. If you climb too hard, your engine's going to stall out. You're going to start spinning and falling towards the ground. Trying Holy to yourself. smokes. Mm. And if I'm on a lower level trying to shoot up at you, I'm going to be taking penalties for that. It's mm. just really well designed, the well, engineering that's went into this. I was going to say, one of the things that I'd heard about this, and it's it's good to have it sort of like reassuringly said by you there, Justin, is that a lot of people worried that this was going to be like a really dumbed down version of the original. But it sounds like they've actually put a lot of depth into those mechanics to make sure that it feels like the, a little bit more like the original game. It's obviously never going to be like replicated perfectly, mm-hmm. but it sounds like a very cool sort of change up for the new version of it. Yeah, so. yeah. and it, it allows us to explore one of my favorite parts of Imperial Combat, which I've only seen one novel for, which is Double Eagle, mm-hmm. which follows an air war, Im- Imperial versus Chaos, mm-hmm. and just fighting against each other. And I believe they've re-released the book. It's by Dan Abnett. Yeah. And it's just, it's That's so much fun. a surprise. Fun. He doesn't do much. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Abnett actually writes our scripts. He wrote that one. <laughs> This is a completely non-forced statement. I like that on this work. Uh, but no, it's it's nice. And I'm excited to see if they'll expand this into the other races as well. So actually seeing Chaos Fighter, seeing Tau aircraft, seeing Eldar aircraft, I think it'd be very, very cool to add to this and make what could be also a very good competitive play game for tournaments and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Are you excited? Very much so. <laughs> you seem like an excited puppy on this one. I am, I am. And... Uh, I'm a little... Uh, see, I want to grab the core set, yeah. but I know John also wants to play Imperial, so uh-huh. I need to find an Orc player. <laughs> Ryan, would you like to be an Orc player? I'm actually interested in this. Uh, so I think Aerial <laughs> Combat is cool. Like, I'm surprised. Any miniature game that manages to get to catch my interest, I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, maybe there's something to this. And the, the mechanics do look pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what, if, what's, if, what's your preference, just looks-wise? Is well, it going to be? He doesn't it care because one of you will be building and painting them. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> if you let me sprinkle glitter on it, <laughs> oh, if, if, if you I take the orcs, go nuts. Yeah, yeah. they're going to be glitterful orcs. <laughs> Flash gets. <laughs> <the bad laughs> Flash gets. <laughs> it's got to be exactly. the bad ones. Yeah, yeah. So that's your law. Um, Aeronautica is now landed. It's uh, it's available. Oh, bad um, Yeah. So um, go and uh, if you're interested, go and grab a copy. It, it's mm-hmm. it's a it's cool looking models man it yeah. is cool looking models right steam forged ben they have announced a new team and captains 
Yeah, so uh, I believe it was during Nova uh, last week. The guys over at Steamforge Games announced a bunch of the stuff that's going to be happening for Guild Ball, which continues to be a big, you know, well, very popular game out there in, in the world. Uh, and so the first of the lesser guilds that they've announced uh, was for the Shepherds, which is a lovely looking guild here, which I, I'm just always drawn to the characters they put forth for Guild Ball. Yeah. I'm, I'm ambivalent to the game. I think it's okay. It's, eh. But I really, really like the models they do for it. And I think these shepherds look absolutely fantastic. They're led by, as you might imagine, Shearer. Not, <laughs> the, Alan, not, not, not the Alan variety, although no. the pose would say otherwise, mm-hmm. uh, which is very cool. It's a celebration from back in the day, if you like to 90s football. But yeah, there you go. Uh, and as well as that, you've got a whole bunch of other team members there showing off in the artwork, as well as the really awesome looking massive ram. I have no idea how that's going to work in a game of Guild Ball, but it looks absolutely very, very cool indeed. And this was then joined in with a bunch of new um, uh, sort of captains to throw into the mix as well. So you've got ones for the Alchemist Guild, you've got Soma there, who looks very, very awesome with the sort of fire, alchemical fire burning off him, which I thought was very, very cool. You've got the Farmers Guild Festival. And then you've got Union, who've got a new version of Greed, who is now a veteran version of him. So the story's moved on with him and telling a little bit of a different tale of him, which I thought was very, very cool. So yeah, some awesome stuff coming out of uh, Guild Ball, uh, sorry, Steamforged for Guild Ball. One of the interesting things as well, when it comes to these models, a lot of stuff they've been doing lately, is that they're kind of designing these models to not necessarily just be useful for Guild Ball, because a lot of the people that are within the uh, Steamforged family, as it were, are very big into their skirmish games and their role-playing games as well. And so they've made a lot of these characters so that they work within the realms of Guild Ball and the sports game itself, but they could also be taken and used as NPCs and characters in role-playing games as well, which I thought was a really, really good idea. Mm-hmm. So yeah, some really good stuff to look out for if you're going to be picking up Guild Ball stuff over the next couple of months. Would that be why the poses are a little more generic and a little less sporty then? Uh, that might be the case. We've definitely seen that with some of the other um, characters they've done recently. Uh, they do they do like a lot of different versions of the same character that either sort of grown up and changed, and they've done them less in sort of like the I'm kicking a ball pose and yeah. more in sort of actiony pose or a, a, like a more sort of like stoic pose instead. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing you, you like the heroic snapshots. Well, no, I, I do. You know, I can understand why they did it. You know, it's um, I just um, yeah, yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's one, it is one of those ones where even if you don't play the game, when you see the model, you go, "That's for a fantasy sporting game." Yeah. Now, if you see it, you go, "He looks like an innkeeper." Yes. <laughs> he could be any innkeeper. Well, he, he's an innkeeper from Shepherd's Bush. Yeah, uh, mm. Pebble Mill, live at one. Oh, well, uh, 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 oh, well, uh, Dan uh, Abnett, uh, thank uh, you for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, moving yeah. on. Uh, War Games Atlantic have put up a sci-fi preview. They have uh, some sci-fi hard plastic sets. You'll like this. Um, uh, that I'm looking. <gasps> oh, I love it. I- it's not just Napoleonics, which you love. Le Grognards. But it's Le Grognards. <laughs> <laughs> See what they did there? Clever people. Oh, fantastic. Napoleonic 40K. Pretty much, yeah. 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 Well, well, we've been there and we've done that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, you know, it's, um, yeah. So, following hot in the heels of our own fantastic Prussonians. Yes. Uh, Le Grognards. You may notice there's three different styles of hat. So, they have the French Foreign Legion Kepi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you have the, the sort of the bearskin shako mm-hmm. the area, and then you have the First World War steel helm. Mm. But every head is also variant. So you've got gas mask or bare face, depending yeah. on what t- style you want. I'm to go sorry, for. it has to be the bearskin. Uh, yeah, yeah, for me, I think it so. It has to be the bearskin. If you're going to go that oh, way, that is basically Napole- Napoleon's elite guard. Yeah, it's, it's staring it's at you. Still right guard there. marching forward. Uh, I just love it. I absolutely. I, I, I love the fact that they've given you multiple multiple options. Anyway, if you are going to go for the the sort of the First World War version, it wouldn't be quite as elaborate. Mm-hmm. And I think the uh, the Cappy, the the Foreign Legion, could do with being sort of toned down or more into the you know the the beau geste. Yeah. Um, Got yeah, that, for me, that, there's that TV shows going. For back me, right. there is yeah. only one option to choose. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of like the World War One look with that gas mask. <sighs> but then you, you could have your Napoleonic one with the gas mask because they've done all the heads with it. Why would you not? I, 
I, I think that if you go for the sort of like the World War One E World War Two thing, we've kind of already seen that done. I yeah, think it'd be nice yeah. to have them so they look very, very different. Know, a bit like the, the a bit like the stuff you would have got from uh, the Praetorians and stuff like that. Ex- in, exactly. You know, is there any other pictures? Or is that the no, that's, you want? that's the only, that's all we've got that's the only colored one. They, they did a few renders, uh-huh. um, which I'll try and track down and, and throw to Ben uh-huh. so we can put them in the show notes. Uh-huh. But. Um, no, that but so sense. far that that's that's what they snuck in there, and they just went, oh, by the way, we've done this because we were all waiting for Dark Age Irish. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, look. These, these should be coming. I was going to say these should. I was going to say these should be coming out. I think it's later this autumn, so yeah. you're not going to have to, go on to wait. Yeah. And there's going to be the same amount of models in the kit as you would have got with the I think what they call Ram Jaeger. Ram Jaeger. So. Yeah. There'll be 24 models in the kit and they'll have all the weapon options stuff. Because yeah. you can see they've got like flamers and grenade launchers. And I stuff. Yeah. really I'm, want some of these. I, I love it a bit. <laughs> uh, the moment that they keep, uh, they are talking about possibly doing their own sort of game in the future. But at the moment, I think most people are looking at them as alternatives for other games. Oh, hell yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, think, I think the phrase they used was Grandma Wendy produces a game. Yes, <laughs> that, that these may be very good for. I'm going. Uh, yes, yes, she does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Grandma Wendy does. You know, a fantastic. Uh, I, absolutely, I can, I can totally see these guys. I do you know what I would match them up with? If I were, if I were a going to match that up with um, some GW stuff, mm. I think they'd look awesome with the Tarox. Mm. Those guys there and get the oh, the the, 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 the Tarot Tarot Tempestus kits, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and but obviously with the wheels on it, not the oh, tracks. Yeah, the well, yeah, the wheels, it's, so it's, the it's far better. Yeah, you can get an upgrade kit for yeah. the the the. It's an Empress or somebody who does that. I think there. it was Anvil and it's it's Anvil. It's Somebody does wheels yeah. anyway for yeah. the Torox to take the tracks off. I'm no, I'm not actually averse to the tracks. I, I, I know, like the tracks. I know you're so. not, but you know you're wrong. <laughs> but, you know, it's, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> according to according to a recent live poll that we <laughs> conducted, <laughs> I was I've, right. I've three responders. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were nobody that agreed with you, my man. Because <laughs> we all knew I was right. Didn't feel they needed to. tracks on the Torox. <laughs> tracks on the so, Torox. So, so, so I assume Warren created three Smurf accounts just for that. It was all live. Everybody yeah, saw that it that was, was true. fair and it was <laughs> fair and completely balanced. fair and balanced. So it was. Okay, next up we have Diplomats and Monsters for Carnivale. Yeah, so uh, TT Combat was doing a lot of terrain uh, recently. I think we talked about it a little bit in the past. They've been doing some fantastic sort of modular stuff that you can use for um, the likes of Warcry and that kind of thing. They did some yeah. more stuff in Necromunda, but they've moved on now to go back to the world of Carnivale and produce some more, more miniatures for a couple of different factions there. So the first of these is the Foreign Dignitary set, which is for the patricians that you see there. So this is a set of alternative uh, nobles and merchants that you can bring into your game. So you've got an Englishman there, a Frenchman. You've got two merchants and there's also the uh, Venetian spy who may or may not be on your side hopefully she is who has the, the long rifle in her possession which is one of the most deadly weapons in the world in the game of Carnivale so that's some pretty cool stuff there and then on the other side of things we've got the, dos- the doctors of the Hospitale who have some more of their weird creatures where they've taken things like massive crocodiles and rhinos and all sorts of things like that and then added weird bits of tech and stuff into them to make them sort of obedient and sort of use them as a weapon of war against your opponents. So you've got some really cool options there too, which is very, very cool. They also said that some of the additional stuff you've got there for the doctors uh, in terms of the sort of handlers they've got there, were well, ones that they show off on sketches quite a way, way, way back on, I think it was the Kickstarter for this, but they've now finally made it to the tabletop in a really awesome way there, as you can see. So yeah, if you're really liking the idea of a uh, carnival, you've got some other options there to sort of add to your wall bands. Or well, if they're hoping to prevent the extinction of the white rhino, that's not the way to go about it. It is. It <laughs> is because neither rhino can really screw up them poachers. Ah, Very fair point. Yeah. Right. Next up, we have uh, Black Seas from Warlord Games. I saw some test shots of these recently. They are looking nice. So this is a one seven hundred scale ship to ship battle game uh, set during during the Age of Sail. Ben? So yeah, this is a new set that is now for pre-order this week. Uh, it starts off with the 
master and commander set, which will give you everything you need to play. So you've got the rule book in there. You've got all the accessories and all the cards and all the widgets and terrain that you need. There's a board that allows you to play out sort of like a, a, a fight in the sea. And you also have uh, enough ships to field both a British and a French naval force as well. So I think you've got a bunch of frigates in there and then some brigs too. And they could be sort of split between the two different nations in order for you to make up the different forces that you need. As well as that, they've also got, as you might imagine, with anything that comes from Warlord Games in the pre-order phase, they've got a limited edition version of the rulebook, which comes like a sort of faux leather looking thing, which looks very, very cool. And it comes with a special 28 millimeter miniature as well, uh, which is called, I think it's called the Seawolf, I think its name is, which is sort of a character you could use in your game's uh, black powder if you wanted to. And as well as that, they've also got a whole bunch of stuff on there when it comes to pre-orders looking towards what's coming next as well. So as well as the Master and Commander set that starts things off, there's also going to be some starter fleets for both the British and the French. And there's also going to be some iconic ships as well. Um, so for the British, you've got the HMS Victory, which is a very cool one that you may know from the Battle of Trafalgar. And then you've also got for the French, Le Orient, which is from the Battle of the Nile, which I read from some guy on the internet spectacularly blew up within the battle, which is one of its claims to fame when the, when all the munitions nice. blew up on the ship. So yeah, very, very cool stuff. I'm, Fantastic. I'm a little bit disappointed that the Seawolf isn't based on Russell Crowe in the film <laughs> Master and Commander. Yeah. <laughs> because they already do a Unleash Hell Russell Crowe from Gladiator. Yeah. This could have been a two for two from Warlord. No, it could have been, yeah. It's um, it, it's interesting. I've, I've I've often wanted to get into the Age of Sail uh, stuff. Mm, you know, yeah, the Trafalgar is a fascinating battle for me. I just um, it, it's something that I've only recently started to swat up on. I've I've moved on from Waterloo mm -hmm. and have have started to, to to try and get more in depth just, into Trafalgar to try and understand. Dipping your toes into there. naval gaming. Mm. Well, it's simply a case of. <laughs> no, I'm not right. Nelson. Yes. I, I was running through about 50 different names there, including uh, uh, Wellington, Napoleon. No one was neither of them. <laughs> it was Nelson. Yes. Um, ha it, ha. It was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the tactic for someone, for someone to end up on a column mm. in the middle of London, mm. right, mm. a hundred foot column in the middle of London. Surrounded by four lions, one of which I have ridden. Nice. <laughs> I remember that night vaguely. <laughs> That's why they can't go back to the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> but to be on a hundred foot column surrounded by four giant lions. Mm. Man, you need to have done some shit in your life. <laughs> so, it, it, and it just, it, it, to, to, to have that level of accolade mm. bestowed upon you. He even made it to Dublin. Huh? There was Nelson's column in Dublin up until the 70s. Oh, that was the one that was blown up, was yeah. it? Yeah. So, so it wasn't just that they only put him in the, the uh, capital in England. Yeah. He, he made it to other capitals look, in, the, in the empire. Look what uh, we've done. Yeah. Yeah. We're amazing. So, so, but, the, you know, you, you like... Uh, the, I can't think of anybody else that ended uh, up on a 100-foot column well, in the middle of you know, Trafalgar well, yeah, Square. Anywhere. So it's um it, it, so it got me it got me interested and then I I, I watched it. Well, well, do you know what? We'll, we'll come. We'll talk more about it in in the future, maybe yeah. in, in conjunction with the the Black Sea stuff. Mm. But it is a fascinating period, and as battles go, it was utterly decisive. Quite like the Spanish Armada battle, mm. at that level of decisiveness. There was um, it, it was that battle was i believe what basically opened up the the british empire it mm. it built off the back of that the fact that they britannia ruled the seas mm. from that point on see i'm just always amazed at the the skill it would have taken back then to actually just man a warship you have no propellers no powered engines you are just catching the wind and trying to get yourself into position to fight I think you'd get to use seals to do it, though. That's yes. what I said. Yeah, you don't have to use your hands <laughs> to catch that wind, no. Justin. You, know, it's, we, what, you have to flap on the sides. <laughs> we, we had a look at this in the playtest phase at Salute this yeah. year, um, and it, it looked like a fascinating game that it scaled. The, it's not just a reskin of Cruel Seas, because obviously they've rescaled it as well, Yeah, uh, and then had to introduce the seal um, to that. So mm. it, it, it looks like a fascinating... It should be fairly easy to pick up, because sometimes naval games, because... The Age of Sail is so uh, complicated. You're not using motorized um, 
propulsion. So getting it to work in a realistic manner without bogging it down in so much detail, that's the trick. And, and they seem to do quite well with the, like say, the, the play test version of Salute. Now that was three, four months ago. So yeah. I'd be so interested to see where they've gone from there. I was going to say one of the interesting things as well that was brought up in one of the comments is that it seems like there's a plethora of options for you now if you like this kind of era mm. and this kind of game. So I think it was Turbacud who said that the, you've got obviously this Black Seas now coming from mm -hmm. Warlord. You've also got Oak and Iron, which was done by Firelock. Firelock that's yeah, right. Yeah, coming out. yeah. And there's also Sails of Glory, which is like the one that everyone knows uh, by Ares as well. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've got lots of different options when it comes to this now, mm -hmm. which is good. Okay, final bit of news. This is an interesting one. I saw this at UK Games Expo, but Deep Cut have created a gaming table. Okay, um, so this is their gaming table. It's a, a lovely piece of modern art. When you it, when it's you look quite at IKEA. It. The beauty of this is four hundred and ninety euro mm -hmm. for this gaming table. Now. Um, that, as gaming tables go, because whenever I walk around UK Games Expo, <laughs> um, the gaming tables are all like two two thousand quid or three thousand quid. So th this one here, um, the top comes off, and then you slide the top into the sides, mm -hmm. and then it becomes like an area where you can put your books and your gaming stuff. Mm -hmm. And then there's an inserted bit down into the gaming table. If I scroll up. You, where can, you can actually you can see yeah, it here. Where a you can better. see it. Yeah. So it's um the. It's a plywood thing that's uh, veneered, and it comes in in a white or a black. I quite like the black. I will say, yeah. You, yeah. you always have to have a black version for the war games. We love our black t-shirts. We, we love our black. <laughs> yeah. so, I also, do. also would match that. all my furniture. Yeah, <laughs> looks nice to me. <laughs> It's it's that, nice. I got to play with it uh, at UK Games Expo, and I, and I did think, uh, yeah, this is nice. This is very nice. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's one of the interesting things seeing this when it came up in the news this week. Like, I hadn't actually heard about it apart from when I saw it this week and, and I, had a look, I had a quick peek at it and sort of showed, let's, you know, had a look at some of the images of how they were presenting you know, all the miniatures and that kind of thing. And for the price of it, I think it's pretty all right. You know, yeah, as you say, there's a lot of big gaming tables out there from Geek and some of the like, which cost you thousands of pounds. A mortgage, it man. They cost but you yeah, a mortgage. Which, yeah. and, and, you know, it's it's a bit of bling to have one of these in your house, but I think if you really want to have somewhere which is dedicated gaming space, it's not a bad idea, really. So, well, the thing about okay. this is, your know, gaming gaming com uh, has become uh, is a is an open part of many people's identity mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, you know, and uh, not all of us have big fancy places where we can have a uh, have like a dedicated space. dedicated gaming space yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So to have uh, something that uh, could function as a dining room table, mm -hmm. you know, or a breakfast table or whatever in your kitchen yeah. and, and then you, you can leave set up fold it out and you yeah. can do your D D or whatever mm -hmm. in it oh, but it's also let's say you get like halfway through a board game and it's just like ah crap we need to take a break we can come back to this another night it means you can actually yeah. still have the table yeah. function without having to pack away your game and remember where the hell everything was yeah yeah what weakling goes to sleep when there's a board game still to play yeah <laughs> <laughs> people who are married <laughs> People who are married, yes, yeah, I, I, I would go to sleep. Right, that's your lot. Right, we have three kickstarters, Ben, that we want to have a look at this week. Um, uh, what are we kicking off with? Uh, so the first of these is for the Cordran conflict, uh, which we had a little bit of a, a sort of look at uh, previously on the weekend, and we also had a gameplay video out for it this week as well, where Justin sat down to talk a bit of well play through the game as well. So I'll let him talk about the gameplay element of it. But the Kickstarter itself comes from Plastic Alchemy, who are doing something that we've not really seen done before where they are creating an entire game that you can 3d print yourself so you can just get all of the stl files for everything you need here and then get it to the tabletop and play the game yourself printing it off in a very sort of substantial way i think it's um, done with not a lot of uh, sort of outlay of cost from your end as well apart from obviously having a 3d printer but it sounds very very good from what they've put forward in the campaign anyway so you can make all the miniatures and all the, all the sort of components and all that kind of thing that you put down on the tabletop in a modular fashion and all that kind of thing as well you can also pledge in order to get this uh, in sort of like a pre pre-printed um, sort of package as well. So if you don't have a 3D printer, you can get it that way too, which is very cool. But it's nice to see more companies going out there and sort of using the 3D printers in order to basically deliver us an entire game in one go, which I thought was a really cool idea. So uh, yeah, this is a new one from Plastic Alchemy, Quadrum Conflict. 
Justin, you got a chance to, to play this, didn't you? I, you I have. Let's Play's going on. I have not only played it, but while uh, we had the guy over here from Plastic Alchemy. Josh, yeah. Yeah, we actually set up one of our own in-house 3D printers, mm -hmm. which he had never seen before that day, had no idea about the required settings. You, so, you, you, you sprung it on him, yeah? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's one of those things with 3D printing. The guys are working really hard to make sure that no matter which brand of 3D printer you're running from, mm -hmm. you have the best chance of getting a functional print coming out from what they're giving you from this Kickstarter. Yeah. So it was actually, and he even said this to me, it was a huge step and a, a bit of a ballsy move to actually set that up and film us going from, here's the setup, here's the settings, we're going to print out one of these miniatures from this from scratch. Mm -hmm. And so we have a video of that, hopefully should be going out in the near future. Wow. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. so, but what we also have in this, which I really like is, you have all the options for 3D printing. So if you want to do something super simple, you can just do the fast print pawns. Yes. So what they're for is if you just want to get up, running, playing, learning the game, and then each unit has a unit type. So this symbol I'm pointing at here is just print it on the top of the fast play token. Uh huh. You can do it via FDM. Oh, the fast parts. print pawns, that's that blue thing at the bottom end. Yes. Right. Okay. So it's so got then, the unit type symbol on it. Yeah. Okay. So then you have the FDM. Two the part. FDM two part assembly, which yeah. the guys do recommend you do two colors because it just, it looks nicer if you don't want to have to actually start priming painting stuff like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then you've got the resin miniatures, which are, if you've got a resin bath, the they do a full miniature as well as the split two part. Right. So like I said, these guys are not doing half measures. They are going as good as they can to make sure you can get a print out and get the game functioning. See, what I'm enjoying about this um, is the, the 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 potential that this offers, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's the I like the idea of almost subscribing to a war game, mm -hmm. right? And that war game um, expanding as we go, mm -hmm. and then I just, all I have to do is just uh, opt to print yeah. what I want. Yeah, this, and it, it's I just I'm, I'm printing it out mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm playing with it. This yeah. was something that I actually said to Jerry about earlier on. Uh, it's an interest because usually when you go on a Kickstarter, you buy a board game, you are paying for a company to print this game and mm -hmm. send it to you. Whereas this, you are paying for the right to print it yourself and you can print it as many times as you want and it's interesting seeing that like the base cost for this is like 29 pounds sterling mm. i think for yeah. for uk and that's really interesting like you could print this as many times as you want and do what you would like with those printed out copies it, it brings a new interesting economic dynamic to the tabletop because it's one of the first things mm. uh, one of the first times 3d printed yep. uh, games have come to kickstarter so yep. it's 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 very interesting that you're paying for the right Mm -hmm. for to the STL. That's cool. Yeah, but you're also not having to worry about losing components from your board game. Mm -hmm. Oh, I lost that uh, tile for the the yeah. game board. You I'll just reprint print one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they are doing sort of a hybrid thing with this as well because you do have the option to get some physical assets like your game board, your cards, things like that. And then you can take your time, so print out those fast play tokens to begin with and then start printing all the additional components around it. Yeah. So you're not just going, I have to be good at 3D printing. There is a chance to step up. But but, but think about this. Think about where this is headed, right? Mm -hmm. Wizards of the Coast, they, they, they launch a new campaign of some new monsters that you meet down the dungeon. Mm -hmm. You just print them. Yep. You just mm -hmm. print them, and then you sit and you play with your mates. Games Workshop, right? They re release their new... Annihilator, Obliterator squad... Mm -hmm. and you look at it and you say, yeah, that suits my meta, I'm going to have that, mm -hmm. and you just well, print it. Yep. There, there was a uh, Kickstarter campaign, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, and it was called The Lost Adventures, and their premise was that they were delivering you all of the 3D print files to, for you to make your heroes, your monsters for every single encounter that you will face during that campaign they laid out. And you did have like terrain elements and all that kind of thing. They then sent you things like boards and the books and stuff that you needed. But then everything else you got was just 3D printed at home. And effectively it was an entire, I think it was level one through five campaign that you got in as an just a, a set of 3D printable stuff. So people are doing it in that sense for the role playing thing. But obviously we if a bigger company took it up, as you say, that could be really interesting to see where they go with that. Mm -hmm. so. Now also, like, I'm no tree hugger. Mm. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> I have hugged a tree. I, I, I've hugged a tree. Now, is this to hold you up? 
No, no, that was a, that was a, that was a lamppost. <laughs> the, the tree was because I, 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 I'd heard that hugging trees make you feel better. So I thought oh, I'll give a tree a hug, a big old oak. But anyway, so, so I'm yes, I am that, a tree hugger, right okay? There. But um, I do care about the environment to some extent, you know, <laughs> to some extent. I care about it a lot. I care about it for my future, my future sp- seed that I have spawned <laughs> into this world. Okay. I want them to have a place that was as, as you know, as well maintained as I find whenever I was born to muck it up <laughs> in their own unique way. But here's, the, here's, here's the point about this, right? Imagine if like a company like kingdom death mm. or games workshop suddenly didn't have to manufacture anything. Mm-hmm. They became a design house. And then you just printed it, yeah. and the PLA, like if if they can if they can find a way to to continue to improve the resolution and the output of these machines. Mm-hmm. Now I have seen some three D printed miniatures recently that were printed on an FDM machine, so one of these just normal ones that print PLA, yeah. and I was astounded by it. Yeah. But PLA itself is is made from corn, mm-hmm. um, so it's a natural uh, a natural product as well. So you know, I I think the environmental impact. Mm. Um, that this could have on our hobby would be absolutely huge. The, the transportation yeah. costs would would go down. Operation well, costs your, your would go down. Your carbon footprint drops off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, massively. Well, the, and then the, well, the material that you're actually printing with is an organic material as well. So, like in games, like in music, like in books, at what point does war games become war digital? Games? Digital di- yeah. digital distribution companies. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Never. There, is one, there is one thing that also happens within the gameplay of this game that I quite like. Yeah. You come to the table with your opponent, you don't know what your scenario is until you're at the table and you don't start building your forces until you've picked your scenario mm. and you're doing this directly across from your opponent. Mm-hmm. So if tactically you can actually sit and look and sort of plan your strategies as soon as you're there and saying, okay, I know this faction likes to do that. So I have this faction. So what's the best way to actually build from this? So for competitive play, you could have a lot of fun with this. Well, it is 26 days uh, left to go. Um, definitely go and check out the Cordron Conflict. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a very, very interesting project that the guys have put together. Right, next up, we have the relaunch of District 9, the board game. Yay. They've went off. They've, re, they've uh, rethought how they're going to do it. What is different this time around, Ben? Uh, so, yeah, this is the guys at Weta. Uh, they launched a Kickstarter campaign, I think it was about six or seven months ago, and they've taken the time since then sort of go back to the drawing board, work with, uh, I think it was Trishula Entertainment in order to bring the game back up to a state where they can sort of make sure that the community feels good about what they're getting. So one of the big things they've changed about it, and this was one of the things that they wanted to push forward across everything, is that there is now a sense of asymmetry between the different factions. So one of the big things that a lot of people talked about when the original game came out, and hopefully Ryan and Justin can talk about this a little bit more because they did a Let's Play on it, is that the factions felt like they were too similar and they kind of just played the same way. They've now made it so the both different factions sort of work completely differently from each other. There are new ways in order to sort of set up the game and start the game where things play out differently. There's also a modular nature to the way the board comes together too. So they've tried to add a lot more sort of replay value into the game at the same time. Uh, the sort of basics of it as a whole is that it's a two to four player game where you take on different factions within the world of District 9 who are sort of fighting for control of the board and scrap and technology during the final three days of the film. And one of the other really cool things about this one as well is that they've gone back to uh, the original model creator who did a lot of stuff for the film and was the inspiration for it, Gary Hunt. And they've taken a lot of his work and reimagined it into a whole bunch of miniatures that you can see hopefully as you're looking through the Kickstarter as well. So it's a sort of really interesting uh, sort of like um, take and hold style game where you've also got a lot of other bits and pieces going in there as well. And also you've got this asymmetry going on there too, which is that sort of new angle they've gone for as well. Uh, but yeah, it seems like Weta have listened to a lot of what people have said, built on it, and come back uh, hopefully stronger than ever with this new version of the Kickstarter. So There we go. Yeah, cool. Um, uh, and then finally, we have one last Kickstarter for you. Um, uh, that last one, the District 9, is 18 days left, so there's still a yeah. good amount of time there uh, to get involved in that. As we film this, it is right on the cusp of funding. There we go. Right. right. Uh, this one is... Zontane's Juice Bar. There's only five <laughs> days left to, to go on this one. It's a micro Kickstarter, so we, you know, it's one of the ones we want to want to show to you guys because it's some really cool stuff. 
Yeah, so uh, this is one that Lance is a big fan, fan of. And I believe maybe it was three or four years ago when we were at Salute, me and Lloyd went over to have a look at these and Lloyd was absolutely taken by their wonderful sort of reptilian, amphibian, yes. dinosaur style creatures as well. And this is uh, a little tiny set that has been highly requested by a lot of people that love this game from the world of Twilight. So you get to either own... Uh, him in metal or in resin, you get to him Zontane and his traveling juice bar that walks around the world of Twilight. <laughs> and it looks absolutely special and amazing. And I really, really hope that Lance gets a version of this so that he can paint it up because he's done some amazing work on some of the stuff for this range before in the past. Uh, but yeah, little tiny Kickstarter. You get the model in two different ways. You can also get some additional stuff so you can get like a, a wooden display base and like a resin one as well if you really want to too. They're also working to unlock some extra stuff so they've got stretch goals to get the stat cards for him to be used in the game as well which is a really nice little addition too as well but uh, yeah a really nice little snapshot of the world of twilight and if you like this make sure you go and check out more from them because they truly do have one of the most like original worlds uh, to play around on the tabletop with and uh, it's well worth checking out in more detail so fantastic look guys thank you so much for joining us remember this week we are giving away a copy of aeronautica imperialis to be able to chance of winning just go over to this video on youtube post a comment but more importantly come across to on tabletop.com and post a comment um uh, on this site and it's worth two entries last week we were giving away the d-day german uh, bundle uh, that was won by LB Lunchbox LB, but go and check the prize center um, on on tabletop.com and you can make your prize claim there. Massive thank you to Justin and Jerry and Ben and Ryan. And most importantly, a huge thank you to all you guys. Uh, for any of you guys that are a member of the Cult of Games, if you're one of our cultists, we will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Take it easy. Have a great weekend. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.